Welcome to Perfect Market. All right, we start off by looking at the total revenue and the total cost. And the way we calculate the total revenue is we multiply the quantity of items sold by the price. So let's do that one. One item multiplied by two rands will give us a revenue of two rands. Two items multiplied by two will give us four rands. Three items multiplied by two will give us a revenue of six rands. Four times two, eight. Five times two, ten. Six times two is twelve. You'll notice when you look at the second column, the price column, that the price is always two rents. And this is because no firm can change a price in a perfect market. All firms are price takers. So if the price is two rents, it will always be two rents. Now, let's come to cost. How do you work out the last column, the total cost? Now, to get the total cost, you add your fixed cost to your variable cost. All right, so 150 plus 150 is 3 rands. 150 plus 250 is 4 rands. Try again. 150 plus 3 rands is 4 and 50. 150 plus 350 is 5 rands. 150 plus 850 is 10 rands. 150 plus 1150 is 13 rands. So when we add our fixed cost to our variable cost, we get our total cost. All right, so let me just talk about the fixed cost a little bit. Fixed cost do not change with output. So you'll see that for one item, it's 150. For two items, the fixed cost is still 150. So it stays the same. So the fixed cost does not change with output. That is actually the definition of fixed cost. It's the cost that stays the same irrespective of output. But the variable cost, on the other hand, changes with output. You'll see that for one quantity, it's 150. For two items, it's 250. For three items, and so forth. So the variable cost changes as output changes. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to take these two columns, the total revenue column and the total cost, move it to the next slide so we can work out whether we have a profit or a loss. Okay, so if you want to check uh, here our total revenue column and the total cost column from the previous slide. So if we want to check whether or not we have a profit or a loss, we just take the total revenue and we minus the total cost. So 2 rand minus 3 rand will give us minus 1 rand. This is a loss because it's negative. 4 minus 4 is 0. There's no profit nor a loss there. 6 uh, rand minus 4 and 50 will give us 1 rand 50. So here we've made a profit because it's positive. And then 8 minus 5 will give us 3. So we got a profit there also. 10 minus 10 is 0, so no profit, no loss there. 12 minus 13 is minus 1. Here we make a loss again. And if we want to talk about profit maximization, we can see that profit will be maximized when the quantity is 4. Because there we make a profit of 3 rands, which is the biggest or the maximum profit we can get. All right, let's do this graphically also. Let's draw a graph to see. Uh, the profit maximization. Okay, we're going to start off with the total revenue. So we're going to start off with this one, total revenue. So when the quantity is 1, the revenue is 2. Remember, quantity is on your x-axis, but the total revenue and the total cost are on your y-axis. So let's find that coordinate point. Quantity is 1, the revenue is 2. So that's the coordinate point there. When the quantity or when we have two items, the total revenue is 4. So two items will be 4. Three items, 6. And so forth. Four items, 8. Five items, 10. And for six items, the revenue is 
12. So let me try to draw a straight line through those points. So that will be our total revenue curve. So let's try to draw a straight line through those points. So our total revenue curve is a straight line, and it is a straight line because uh, we had a linear relationship. The revenue was increasing by 2 every time. So that's why the total revenue curve will always be a straight line. Now, let's look at the total cost curve. All right, let's come now to the total cost curve. We basically draw it the same way as the total revenue curve. Uh, when the quantity is 1, all right, so the quantity is 1, the cost is 3 rents. It's going to be this point here. When the quantity is 2, the cost is 4 rents. So it's going to be the same point uh, we, uh, as a total revenue because they are both 4 rents, as you can see. Uh, when the quantity is 3, uh, the cost is 4 and 50. 4 and 50 is between, halfway between 4 rents and 5 rents over there. And then when the quantity is 4, uh, the total cost is 5 rents. Okay, we lost that point there. 4 and 5 rands is over here. And then when the quantity is 5, the cost is 10 rands. When the quantity is 5, cost is 10 rands. 5 and 10 rands would be 5 and 10. Oh, it will also be at the same point uh, as, as the total revenue. Okay, I think... This one was erased again. So we said when the quantity is 4, then the revenue is 5 rand. So that was supposed to be a point also. And that's a point. Then finally, when the quantity is 6, the last point, then the revenue will be, uh, sorry, the cost will be 13. It will be over here. And as you can see, this graph is not going to be a straight line like the total revenue. In fact, it's a very curvy line. So let me just try to draw a line through all those points so we can... Find, draw our total cost curve. All right. As you can see, the total cost curve looks much like this. So if you have to draw this in the exam, just remember total revenue is a straight line, but uh, this, is, this would be the shape of the total cost curve. And we know, we already knew that the profits were maximized at the when the quantity is 4. And now we can also see it on the graph. You can see that would be that line there uh, represents, this line represents the profit maximization because that's where the gap between the total revenue and the total cost is the largest profit maximization. Uh, so maximization. So when we use the graphs, we can see that this line is a profit maximization line. The difference between the total revenue and the total cost, and that's when the difference is the largest. All right, so we can work out the profit maximization like that if we are using the total cost and the total revenue. All right, now for the last slide. Um, here we can learn how to calculate the average revenue and the marginal revenue. So the average revenue is the extra the revenue per unit. And the marginal revenue is the additional revenue for uh, each is the revenue for each additional quantity produced. So this is the revenue per unit, and this is the additional revenue. So how do you calculate uh, the average revenue? So basically, you would take your total revenue two and you divide by the quantity. So two divided by one is two. 4 divided by 2 is also 2. 6 divided by 3 is still 2. 8 divided by 4 is 2. And then 10 divided by 5 is 2. 12 divided by 6 is 2. So notice that the average revenue will always be the same as the price. Remember, the price was 2 rents. Uh, every, at every point, the average revenue is also 2 rents. And then how do you get your additional revenue then? All right, so the additional revenue, we're also going to use the total revenue column, but uh, 
we just look at how much additional revenue we get as the output increases. So when we go from 0 to 2, we get an additional revenue of 2. From 2 to 4, we get an additional revenue of 2 rents. From uh, 3 to 2, uh, when the quantity goes from 3 to 2, we get an additional revenue of 2 rents. When the quantity goes from 3 to 4, you see the additional revenue will always be 2 rents. Notice that the marginal revenue also will always always be equal to price, just as the average revenue, which then explains the horizontal demand curve in a perfect market. And the demand curve will equal to the price, but will also be equal to the average revenue and the marginal revenue. And this will only happen in a perfect market.